Welcome to the Phase World Podcast. Engaging conversations that cross the boundaries between business, art, and the digital world. and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another week of the Face World podcast. I am your host, Fei Wu. Face World is a homegrown podcast production company. We love unsung heroes and self-made artists. Unlike celebrity-focused podcasts, we want to focus on people like yourself who are willing to share the most authentic stories out there, not just the successes, but also the failures, the heartaches along the way. Today, I am joined by Cirque du Soleil artist Roman Tomanov, who was born in Moscow, Russia, into a circus family. His father was his coach. He began public performances at the age of five. After immigrating to the United States and residing in Las Vegas at a young age, Roman has performed with the largest theatrical production company in the world, Cirque du Soleil. His most recent appearance is with Curios, the Cabinet of Curiosities. In addition to aerial acts, Roman is a trained performer also in bungee, trample wall, flying harness, break dance, and movie stunts. Prior to Curios by Cirque du Soleil, Roman had the pleasure to perform with Le Noir, and before that, he was with Zaya by Cirque du Soleil, located in Macau, China, between the years of 2008 and 2013. What's interesting about this conversation is that Roman and I did not intend it to be a podcast episode. Therefore, you will find the style a little bit different than previous episodes of the Face World podcast. My questions are shorter, so are Roman's answers in many cases. We dive deep into Roman's origin stories, his early training, and how his dad slash his coach turned their home into a gym. At the age of nine, Roman won his first prestigious Silver Clown Award at the Festival International du Cirque at Monte Carlo. In the following years, Roman continued to win international competitions, including a bronze medal at the Wuhan International Acrobatic Art Festival, a bronze trophy at the 5th International Circus Festival in Rome, Italy, recognized with the bronze medal at the 5th International Circus Festival in Budapest, Hungary, Roman competed against the most prominent performers of the circus arts in the world. In the same year, Roman took gold medal at the European Youth Circus Competition in Germany. Next to the Circus Festival in Paris and Monte Carlo, the European Youth Circus is the most prestigious event of its kind in Europe. You can visit phaseworld.com for show notes and favorite quotes related to this episode. And as always, if you could share Phase World podcast with one more friend, just one more person, we would greatly appreciate your support. Without further ado, please welcome Roman Tomanov to the Phase World podcast. Talk about when you were five, six, and seven, because I saw some of the photos where some of the photos were taken at home. And I think you may, I don't know what type of house that you grew up in, but there were straps and there's like silk straps all around. Yeah, well, I started training in uh, Korea. So yeah, it was my dad, my parents were working in a show in Korea. It was some kind of like, it's an inside theme park. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and that's where I started training. I actually had uh, a mattress that I was sleeping on. That was my mat for spotting, and that was my sleeping mattress as well. So I used my mattress for both as like a wow. safety mat, and uh, yeah, so it was pretty intense. <laughs> wow, in Korea. So do you speak a little bit of Korean or no? Oh, no, no, no. I was like, I was five, five, six years old at that time. So yeah, that's kind of where. He started stretching me and everything. That's where I first started doing st- learning straps. Who was teaching you? My dad. My dad was teaching me in the beginning. Wow. So, yeah. so you, both of your parents are performers? Uh, just my dad. My dad went to circus school in Russia. So my dad did a lot. He did like um, 
teeterboard and because uh, he worked in uh, Oval with, with another Cirque du Soleil show. And uh, yeah, he did flying trapeze. Yeah, my dad did, my dad did a lot. <laughs> Ovo, I remember it's the the original Cirque show. And uh, I remember when I was in Vegas and they were completely sold out. Um, Ovo, it was a touring show. Ovo was a, it was a touring show and it was based on insects. Yeah, so that that's the one my dad was in. No yeah. way. What type of act is he training for? Uh, well, he's training my two twin sisters, teaching them straps as well. And I heard that they're super young. Yeah, they're nine years old. They're already pretty crazy. Wow. All right. Okay. This is super fascinating. I'll, we'll come back to you. What was that conversation like when your dad approached you when you were five years old and say, you know, let's do this like professionally or? Uh, I don't think there was ever a discussion like that. I think we just started training. He started training me, like stretching me for splits, like basic uh, acrobatics and stuff like that. And I don't know, apparently, I guess one day he decided to try straps. Apparently he just got some straps and it was funny because um, I was training at home, so uh, there was no place to put up the straps. So apparently there was a there was a ceiling, and there was like a little gap on top of the ceiling. So he built a little rig to put the straps on there. Yeah, and I guess I was I was light enough still, so. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting story. Wow. So yeah, that's, that's how I started. And you have you have an older brother too, who's, uh, who is performing with you in Curials, and that's how kind of how we met. Where was he at the time? Were you guys training together when you were five? I know he's a little bit older. Well, yeah. He, what happened was when I was born, I was born in Moscow. My dad already signed had a signed contract in Vegas, I believe. There was a show called EFX, so they couldn't take all of us, so they only could take like one of us. And I was just born, and. Uh, so they had this contract signed, and they had to fly to Vegas to start the contract. And I was left with my mom's parents, and I moved to Ukraine. And I lived with my mom's parents until I was like four and a half, five. And my brother stayed in Moscow with my dad's parents, and my sister went with my dad. So she was training already with my dad. This is your older sister? Uh, yeah. So we all kind of split in that for, that for like four years. So because wow. they couldn't afford uh, to bring all of us because it was... It was too expensive at that time. Yeah. And then uh, I think at age of five, I flew with my parent, my mom's parents to Moscow. We stayed there for a little bit, picked up my brother. That's where I met my brother for the first time. I didn't even know I had a brother. Yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> so you moved to Vegas when you were f five around? Yeah. Yeah. And then you were in Korea. I mean, wow, you're, you're a world then, traveler. Yeah, after that, we went to Korea. My dad, my dad had a contract in Korea. And then after we finished Korea, they went. We we all went back to Vegas. I can't believe I learned so much about you in ten minutes. Um, wow, are you thinking that you were the only child before you met your brother and sister? I didn't really know. I didn't know because even when I came to uh, when I flew to Vegas, I didn't know that they were my parents because I I, I never met my my mom or dad until I flew to Vegas. I was five years old at that time. Wow. I lived with my mom's parents the whole time. Yeah, so t tell me a bit more about your first stage experience, if you still recall. Like, do you remember when you're uh, seven? One of my first performances was in, uh, it was in Studio 54. There used to be, my dad was working in a big, big show before. It was called EFX. And that show, I can't remember for how many years it ran for, but it was like one of the biggest shows at that time in, like, in the world, I believe, because they had some pretty crazy stuff they have like this huge dragon on stage and my dad was working in the flying trapeze act there mm -hmm. i grew up in china and sort of general circus acts are something that are very much ingrained even though we were most of us obviously weren't trained for for it it's like like you know not all chinese people know kung fu but there were we went to a lot of shows and then every year during chinese new year I mean, trapeze, it's kind of like 50% of our national uh, show. So every, you know, 1.2 billion people are kind of zooming in and watching that. But what are some of the different types of um, flying? Is it fly, flying trapeze? I noticed in your acts, there's silk based. There's more of the, these are like bands, elastic bands. What's the difference between them? I'm not really sure, but I believe straps came, it was a Chinese invention. Because there used to be, they used to do group numbers. There used to be like 
five, six people performing on a single pair of straps. But I believe that the, this act came from China. Mm. And I've done, I've seen you uh, in Curios, for for example, are these kind of um, pretty harsh looking bands. And I know that you have a lot of calluses on your hands as a result of it and your arms possibly. And then there, when you're younger, I noticed there's more silk, almost like wings. And, and then you kind of gather them all and they start to look more like regular straps. What's the difference for you? I mean, is there such a thing as when you're younger, you have to start with a different set of straps or when you're older? The thing is, I was using full cotton straps, but they are very dangerous because they don't hold as much weight. So the older you get, you become heavier and it becomes more dangerous using that kind of straps. At that time when I was training, they didn't really have anything else to use. So that's what I, I believe what everybody was using full cotton straps. And it wasn't until like I was 13 or 14 years old, we found a guy that was building straps. And actually, he's now building straps for Cirque du Soleil. I was one of the first first ones to build from him, and then Cirque kind of started using him. Wow. Yeah. So that's, uh, I'm just trying to do the math. That's about 15 years ago. It's interesting that how the innovation happens within Cirque, because it feels to me that it's very natural for or circus in general to kind of go through the transition the thing yeah. is that when uh when because i came in uh, i also auditioned i did soulstrom for cirque du soleil it's a it was a series it was like a cirque du soleil series they had they would invite specialty acts and uh, right. they would record them and it would they would show up on live television so yeah and when i came in they they looked at my straps and they're like oh wow these are like super they're dangerous because they're fully cotton and they're known to rip at a certain breaking point. Uh, but I was still young, so I, I wasn't weighing that much, so it was still okay. But yeah, they let me use them, but after that, me and my dad were looking for a company that could build good quality straps with low power, so. I can't believe that it was you and your dad who had to look for better quality straps. <laughs> Sir did have straps at that time, but I was still young and they were too big. They were way too big for my hands. I couldn't really use them. Even now, I still don't like the ones they use. And we had to find, and we found a guy in Vegas, actually. He was building uh, saddles. He was built like saddles and a few rigging things. And then, yeah. So I came to him. We spoke spoke to him about it. And then he built me the first straps. That actually fits. It's almost like, to me, it was like custom suits. You know, like everything is measured based on your weight, on the size of your hands. And... When did you feel like you were growing up? You, you started doing this when you were seven. And uh, I know performing arts is very different as you progress through different ages. And when did you feel nervous or when did it actually hit you to realize that when you're old enough, it's like, wow, I'm on stage performing in front of hundreds and thousands of people. I think that was never an issue for me. I, I only got nervous when I did competitions like circus festivals, circus competitions. I think that's when I would get nervous because you would have to perform. It doesn't really change much. You're still performing for the same people, but it's just that thing that it's it's a competition. If you mess up or something, they like they really pay attention to that kind of stuff. Like your lines, your everything, they pay attention to it. And I think that was the only moments where I really got nervous. I go out there and do my thing. <laughs> do you think it matter going from when you were like a solo performer when you were younger to... Uh, kind of performing together with your brother. Did, how was that transition? Did that change? Well, this this is the first show that me and my brother worked actually together in an act, like one act together. But we've worked before in a show together, but separate acts. It was actually a really interesting story because uh, the original act was supposed to be the Atherton Twins for Curious. I heard. <laughs> they told me. I was like, oh, we have a small world. Yeah, so they, they, were, they were the original uh, cast. Picked. I remember calling Cirque and I asked them, like, hey, do you guys have anything lined up for straps? They're like, no. And I asked them for this new project that's coming up. They're like, we already have the Atherton twins already signed. I was like, okay, so just keep in mind if anything comes up, let me know. And one day we were just, me and my brother were in the gym, not really sure what we we're doing. And I did, did some kind of a move and he's like, oh, let me try that too. So he copies me and then I was like, let's do that together. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's do this now, synchronize it. So we we're like perfectly on time. And then I was like, oh, wow. And then we asked my brother's wife uh, to video it. And we're like, oh, wow, this looks really interesting. Let's, let's come up with more stuff. So I, I believe in like a week, we had some kind of material 
already. And they're like, we're just sitting there like, let's just send it to Cirque and see what they think. Okay. So we sent it to Cirque. And I, I believe like two, three days later, they contact us about Curious. They're like, are you guys interested in working together? And we're like, wow, that's, that was quick. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> that's amazing because I think Curio started maybe a couple of years ago. And the backstory of that is, I'm so glad you sent the video. Uh, one of the twin brothers, Andy Atherton's son, was born at that time. And uh, I think it's crazy. When I interviewed them, they said they missed literally two shows. And because he had two kids precisely two kids and he had to miss those two days and I guess the brother couldn't perform on his own and uh it's interesting how sort of the universe and and all these things just sync up we had really had no idea we kind of we didn't really plan for anything we just kind of like said okay let's just send it in and see what they think and then a few days later they contacted us like wow that's awesome I'm very glad to hear that because I've seen so many shows and Curious is so far absolutely one of my favorites and I when I say I, I mean Two, two shows I enjoy the most is Curials and the other is Paramore. Um, Amazing. I, I watched it like three times when I was in New York. And it was funny because when we, we were there, we, were, we had like a week before we started with Curious. And uh, me and my friend were walking in the center of the city and, and we were just walking there. And I was like, let's go check out the theater, where, where the theater is at, Paramore. Okay, so we get there and we're like, ooh, what time is the show? It's like, oh, it's in one hour. We're like... Let's just ask them if we can go in. So we went and spoke to the ticket booth because we were told them we're like, we're like from Cirque du Soleil as well. We're here for Curious. And he's like, you know what? I can't give you any tickets, but come back in 30 minutes and maybe I can hook you up. And yeah, and then we came back in 30 minutes. They're like, get in, get in, get in. <laughs> we're like, wow. Because usually like, you have to call in advance and book everything. And then they're like, get in, get in, get in. Yeah. So, cool. so we, we, get, we got to watch it three times. Really great show. I, I really liked it. It's it's awesome. I think you would really like the Atherton twins. They're just the most like they're super down to earth and like. Oh, they're great. They're great people for sure. Yeah. Have you met them? A few times. Yeah. Yeah, because um, they used to come to tr train in. Uh, well, actually, his uh, wife Garcia was training at Loracle in Vegas, and that's where I trained. So I I saw them quite often. Oh wow. So yeah, that's when they were working in uh, Zarkana, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the one I went to Vegas to see. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like for an artist like yourself to watch another Cirque show? What did uh, it feel like? I don't know. It's hard to explain because I grew up like basically in the circus world. So for me, I always watched acts and like different circuses. I liked it. I loved it. It's always nice to watch other people perform. Great to be a spectator as well. <laughs> Finally. So let me tell you how you can improve this. What I really enjoyed about Curios, I think the reason why so many people love the show is because it's um, it felt smaller and way more intimate. I love how close I could get to the stage. And yeah. I don't like to be really far away. I don't like the feeling of being like at this huge stadium and I'm over here and the act is over there. Yes. Um, and Curios, I, I think it's also kind of fascinating is it's so mysterious. There's something, there's like a story behind a story and and behind a story and you can, it really takes your imagination. It's, it's non-obvious, you know? Yeah, no, it's definitely a great show. Yeah, it's very cool. I, to, when I talked to Rainey, she told me that she was she was crying the entire time watching the show, kind of seeing it from the audience. So we're gonna go travel back a little bit. I I love the costume. I I could talk about Curios forever, which I'm not gonna, um, because we have 20 years of your experience, 22. Um, so what was the show before Curios that you were involved in? Uh, well, I did Lenoir. It was a small show. It's a small company. It's actually based off Base, Base Entertainment. It's a big group in Vegas. And yeah, they, we built this show like in the two, two, three weeks. Like there was a director that came in and we put, put the show together. And we worked for three, three months, four months, three, I think three and a half months or three months in Japan. So we did Tokyo for three months with Lenoir. And before that, Oh, I did Absent in Las Vegas. It's actually a great, it's a really funny show in Vegas. It's yeah. definitely a must see if you ever go to Vegas. So I, I was there, they took me for a month and I ended up working there for like four or five months. And before that, I did Ka with Cirque du Soleil, but I was part of a house troupe. So I did um, 
jumping off. So I didn't do straps, but it was still really cool to do something different. Like you, you get to jump off of like on, on bungees and stuff like that. But I was there for a short, short period, like three months as well. And yeah, and before that, I was uh, working in Zaya in China, in Macau for four years, four and a half years. No way. Wait a minute. Zaya, Zaya was in uh, Macau, which I didn't know that. And people in Macau are crazy. And, and the travelers to Macau, are they're just crazy about the shows. In fact, I'm going to sort of whisper that because uh, my friend, um, Pam, who's from Macau, you know, said that the shows in Macau are better than the ones in the U.S. I, I'm going to quote her. So what was it like living in Macau for four years? Uh, it was great because I, that was my first experience by without having a bodyguard or without working with my dad. So it was kind of, it was a great experience for me. I made a lot of friends and actually it was, it was fun. It was very different because I, I wasn't used to, you know, like, doing things by myself, but I loved it. I, lo- I actually, I loved it. You know, it's like you're let out in this world and you just go do your thing. So yeah, it was, it was hard, but it was, it was fun. How old were you at the time? Do you remember? I just turned 18. Wow. So 18 to 22, you were in Macau. Yeah. I think it was even 23. It was like five years. Wow. What was the show schedule like? And I know it's, generally speaking, it's a really brutal schedule. So for Curios, for Paramore, what was it like for Zaya for you? Uh, Zaya, it was, a, it was a stationary show there. So it, the schedule was actually a lot easier. <laughs> the thing is, with touring shows, you have that um, the shows are longer. It's like two and a half hours, basically, with the intermission. In Macau, there was no intermission it was only an hour and a half, and that's it. So it was like a straight shot through the whole entire show. And basically, we did 10 shows a week, 8 shows a week. It was, it was a good schedule. It was an easy schedule. It was, for me, it was easier because uh, like once the show starts, it just kind of flies through, which was good. But with Curious, it's difficult because you have that pause in between. I kind of prefer just to like one shot and get it done. Yeah, for so for Zaya, you know, were you focusing uh, mostly on the straps act, or were you running around on stage doing all kinds of stuff? Like you, you never had a dull moment, sort of thing. Oh, uh, it's actually interesting because when uh, when the show first opened, I was doing a duo straps act with a girl, so I was like duo with a girl, basically duo straps. And uh, yeah, I was running. I had quite many cues running around on stage, but I believe they changed the concept after a year and a half and we went they wanted uh solo straps and just me on stage and uh and they kind of cut me from scenes which was great because i only had like a few cues and the act and finale <laughs> so what was your day like at zaya or kind of in general i know probably it's very different but you've been performing your whole life how do you manage your day like when what time do you usually get up going to performance and come back? Uh, well, in Macau, it was, a, it was a different lifestyle there because the shows would start later. And since they're shorter, so you don't have to come into work till like 6 o'clock. So you have the show at 7.30 and then 9.30 the next show, and you're done at 11 something. So you're basically free from 12 o'clock. Yeah, I don't know. We had the whole day free. Sometimes I went and I worked out in the in the training room uh, at our show. Sometimes we just got together, we would go to the pool. Yeah, relaxed most of the time. It sounds like you liked it a lot. Have you ever imagined what would it be like if you were not coming from a circ, you know, sort of circus family, uh, and then you have to go to school, study math? I don't know. For all the time that you've been studying circ act, I just, I've been studying math and science. Like, what, what would that alternative life be like for you? Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. That'd be a hard one. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. No. <laughs> yeah, I like music, so I'm actually studying music right now. I'm actually signed up to uh, for music production, so I'm going to be learning how to produce music. And yeah, I've all I always had big interest in music. I just never had that time to actually go go for it, and I never took that step. And this time, I actually have the opportunity and a lot of free time now. So I'm pushing for it and st- actually studying music production. What type of music production uh, are you thinking about? 
Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking into hip hop and house music. I kind of like both genres. So it, for me, it was it's like they were asking me, what kind of genre are you mainly focused on? And I was like, you know, it's hard for me to decide because I, I like both. Yeah, I think there is a, that intricate link between being the um, circus actor, being a performing artist, and then figuring things out. Because in a way, you know, when I that's why I love working with musicians and artists because your body, you know, is your instrument. And all of us have limitations and we have to overcome them to a certain degree, you know. And so because you've been doing this for so long, the act itself, the way you work with your body, it's almost, it becomes too natural. I don't know how much you actually think about it, but do you recall uh, a time where whether it's an act that you were learning or were when you were injured? I know people are injured all the time. And how do you t- try to overcome that difficulty? Well, learning an act, it's its like for Curious, it was uh, it was something new for us both, like for me and my brother as well. It was definitely a new thing because we never, never kind of really worked together that close. So for us, it was very different. But I think with time, we got more used to each other again. And uh, yeah, it was it was good. The good thing it was because we all we were both trained from my father. So we kind of had similar training. So we had similar technique. So for us, it was easier because we knew how like I could tell him like, hey, do this a little bit longer. He's like, okay, so let's do this now and see if it works. So it was easy for us to com- communicate because, first of all, we're a family, and second of all, we had similar technique and we knew how each technique worked. So, but with injuries, like Cirque du Soleil definitely offers like they really help you out when you're injured. But in traditional circus, you don't get that comfortable. Like you can't say, "Oh, my shoulder hurts. I'm not working today." You have to push through it, find ways how to how to push yourself, and yeah. they don't offer you the same as Cirque du Soleil does. Yeah, Cirque du Soleil, in my opinion, it's like this huge corporation has got sort of everything uh, figured out. Physical therapists. Somebody was asking me this the other day. I just finished an online MBA course, and they were asking me what happens to a just in this case, Cirque du Soleil artist, if you are injured, like, what is that process like? Or even when you're, like, on tour, like, uh, you know, what's well, offered? They, actually, they really do. They really take good care of the artists. Mm-hmm. And, like, in my situation, I was seen by the doctor, like, super quick. It was, like, three days. I had my MRI done and everything. And then I think the hardest part was, for me, the waiting period because I knew something was wrong with my knee, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And I had the MRIs in my hands, and this being my third time, I already, I kind of could know. I had a little bit of knowledge how to read MRIs, so I popped that CD in and I started looking for things in my knee. And I kind of knew it before even the doctor told me. When I got to the office, he told me that he had like a torn ligament, and I was like, "Yeah, I know because I already, I already read the MRI report." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how to fix things, but I can't fix this one. Yes, yeah, Cirque du Soleil really help their artists when they're injured. They really take good care of them. And like even in my situation, they usually they don't really send artists to Montreal because the, either you can go home or they, they sometimes they bring you to Montreal. But in my case, my best thing would be to come to Montreal and have uh, like physiotherapists that work with artists and gymnasts to work and help me get better quicker that's that's really good to hear hi there it's me again I want to thank you very much for listening to this episode, and I hope you were able to learn a few things. If you enjoyed what you heard, it would be hugely helpful if you could subscribe to the Face Royal podcast. It literally takes seconds. If you're on your mobile phone, just search for Face Royal podcast in the podcast app on iPhone or an Android app such as Podcast Addict and click subscribe. All new episodes will be delivered to you automatically. Thanks so much for your support.